Hey and welcome back. Regard this as an introduction video into what I believe has gone wrong with NASA. For the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. We have vowed that we shall not see space filled with weapons of mass destruction, but with instruments of knowledge and understanding. Yet the vows of this nation can only be fulfilled if we in this nation are first, and therefore we intend to be first. When John F. Kennedy issued the challenge to put a man on the moon within a decade, America really rose to the challenge. It was actually a Cold War one-upmanship with Russia. But something magic happened. It was a collaboration of the military, no doubt, but engineering and artisans and science and over 500,000 people were employed in building everything from rocket engines to sewing space gloves to put men on the moon. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. The great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it. He said because it is there. Well, space is there. And we're going to climb it. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. As a child growing up in the United Kingdom, it fascinated me and I lapped it all up. And I do believe that it was man's greatest adventure. We all watched the live broadcast of Neil stepping off the lunar lander and making one small step for man, but a giant leap for mankind. It changed the world. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But over subsequent Apollo lunar missions, people lost interest. By the time of Apollo 17, the TV networks weren't even taking live footage from the moon. It was just not interesting to the general public. We see around us empty live wanting fulfillment. The high ground of obtaining men on the moon should never have been wasted.
I really expected within a few years we'd have a moon base. How amazing to have a colony of humans regularly on the moon. And what an amazing strategic advantage to be there. And I expected a mission to Mars just to be a few years away. <laughs> And there was an unexpected advantage to the Apollo mission. It unified planet Earth. NASA were amazed, NASA in America were amazed that other countries saw it as a thing for the whole of humanity. Okay, it was Americans who walked, but it was the human race for the first time had stepped onto another celestial body. I mean, amazing stuff. It unified the planet. They should have really built on that. It actually brought us all closer together to know how amazing it is to see the little pale blue dot of Earth for the first time as a complete circumference. Very few people have seen that with their own eyes. Truly spiritually amazing. We have never stepped foot on the moon again. Watching the wonderful Scott Manley TV channel, he explains that we've now actually forgotten how to build a moon rocket. And in fact, the plans are gone. The people have retired. Actually doing it again in the same way as was done in 1969 is impossible. It's gone horribly wrong. Why? So that was my introduction to what I call the end of man's greatest adventure. In part two, we'll look at the disaster that was the space shuttle. The truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.